with God. That's the thing that counts to to Mid-Morning Manna. Lonnie Mattingly here on behalf of North Harrison Baptist Church. Glad you've tuned in. Hope you'll share this with your friends. You know, we've been talking this week about a servant's heart. This is Valentine week. Last Sunday was Valentine's Day. I hope you got to spend a little bit of time with your Valentine. And uh, maybe I hope that you were in church with your Valentine. And uh, that's a wonderful thing to do. And looking forward to God's blessing and help in the week, uh, in the rest of this week, as we uh, approach the end, as we're coming down, we're down to to uh, Thursday already, and uh, how important it is that we think about our hearts, uh, our own heart, not just my boy. I hope I hope she loves me, or I hope he loves me, whatever the case may be, uh, and uh, that that sort of thing, but that we want God to know that we love him, that our heart is really right, and that we love the Lord Jesus. We love the Holy Spirit of God. We want to be yielded and submissive to them and to be used of God in a great way. Well, we're talking today about how the heart of a servant is not selfish. A, tr a genuine servant of God will not have a selfish heart. We've talked about a heart that's humble. We've talked about a heart that's compassionate and loving. We've talked about a, a heart that is obedient. On Wednesday, we talked about that. And now today, we're talking about that unselfish heart. And I want to read to you from Philippians chapter number two and uh, verses one through eight. It's a little bit longer than I normally read, but I think this is so important because I want you to see, uh, hopefully, in your heart, in your, in your mind's eye, you'll see a picture of Christ, and you will see his heart, how he cares, how he submits himself to God, and how he submits himself and, and, and sacrifices himself for us, and his obedience, and, and all the other things that we've talked about already. He, he summarizes many of them right here. He says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Boy, that's the exact opposite of the, of the way that the world portrays things and says how it ought to be, that you ought to have all this self-confidence, that you ought to be to see yourself as number one and all that kind of thing. It's all a mind game. But he said it's not by strife and vain glory. It's not dog eat dog and who can get to the top of the ladder. It's, uh, he said, let, he said that not of strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We're not just looking out for ourselves. We're also looking out for other people. I don't want to go through life. Uh, again, I used this phrase earlier, like a bull in a china shop to get what I want out of life and in the process be hurting others. I don't want that. 
I want to be a blessing to others as I go through life, and I hope that you do too. I know the Lord Jesus Christ did everything he did was for you and for me and for others that needed a savior. And then he goes on to say this in verse five. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Here he was, Jesus, the God man, 100% God, 100% man, the virgin born and son of God. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, you need to think the way Christ thought even though he could have thought of himself as, hey, I'm God on earth. Everybody ought to be falling on their face before me and serving me and taking care of me. Instead, he spent his life doing the opposite, trying to take care of others and ultimately gave himself for you and for me. But this, let, let me read it again. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. It, it wasn't he was trying to be somebody. He was somebody. He was equal with God. It was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the, the triune God, equal and yet separate. And uh, it, But he goes on to say, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He took upon himself the form of a servant. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Goes on to say, wherefore God hath highly exalted him, given him a name above every name. Oh my, what a, what a savior that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and things in earth, things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When we really understand him, when we really see him as he is, it does something in our heart toward him to change us. And we ought to have a heart that's more like the savior's heart, a heart that is not selfish, not just living for self, not just getting what I can get out of life, no matter what it costs other people, but wanting to share. If God blesses me in an unusual way, I want to be a blessing to others. And I want to tell you, I've known a number of people like that in, in my lifetime, and I want to, they have been an unbelievable blessing people that have, have maybe acquired more than, than average, and they've been willing to share their, their acquisitions with others to be a help, to involve themselves not only physically in the work, doing something, teaching and leading and, and going soul winning, but also in giving and financially being a blessing and helping other people who had difficult times and, and, uh, and meeting the needs in other people's lives. And what a blessing to, to be able to do that on some occasion, not, not often, but to be able to do it at all is a wonderful thing. And then to know other people like that, God-fearing people, people who love God, people who see themselves not as big shots, but as servants, what a wonderful thing. And that's what God wants from us. God wants us not to live lives of selfishness. It is not about me. That word selfish has self right there in the front. It's not selfishness. It's Jesus first, others second, and yourself last, and others in between. Jesus first, others, uh, yourself last, and others in between. J-O-Y. All that joy that comes from doing it God's way. Well, I've taken more time than I meant to today, but I tell you, God's been good. Let's pray together, and uh, we'll go hear the last part of that song again. And by the way, that's Brother Ed Russ and the and the quartet from over at Faith Baptist uh, Church and, and Faith Music Missions in Evansville, Indiana. You ought to get a hold of those folks and go to their website at Faith Music Missions. Go there let and uh, get involved in the programs they have there, the unbelievable music and a lot of it. And get it in your get it in your phone and in your life and listen to it on a daily basis. It will lift your spirit. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to be servants of Christ. Lord, help us to live a life with others in mind, not just self. Lord, help us to put Jesus first. Help us to put ourselves last and help us to put others in between. Lord, live, you left us here. This isn't heaven. We're not, we're, uh, certainly we all try to find an easy life, but it, it, we're not in heaven yet. We have a job to do. And part of that job is reaching others for your glory. 
and we give you the praise. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, how would you feel if your heart were made? Thank you.